I was told in my few brief moments to give a message of hope. And I will. I promise that. But I also have to give a message of truth. And the truth is, we're living in unprecedented times. We're living in a time of uncertainty, of anxiety, of division, and yes, fear. And aren't there days where you wake up and you feel like you're living in some sort of an alternative reality <laughs> where we don't even agree on what the basic facts are? And making it more difficult for all of us is that the institutions that we typically turn to in times like these for support and counsel, institutions like the church, the media, academia, and even government, we're questioning these institutions as well, and they're also under siege. So here's the message of hope. Here we are, some five plus decades after the assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I can say this, and you can say it with me, and we can all say it together. The moral arc of the universe has bent towards justice. It has bent towards justice. But the reality also must be acknowledged, and the reality is that we're living at a time where at the federal level we have an administration that's seeking to build a wall to divide us. We have policies coming out of Washington, D.C. that seek to separate small children from their families. And I will say it, Pastor, because I agree you can't say it, but I'm going to say it. We have a president who emboldens racist behavior. And we... We do not have the liberty here in Portland, Oregon, as fantastic, as great, as beloved as this community is. We do not have the luxury of assuming that, well, that's just something that happens in Washington, D.C., or that's just politicking and posturing, or that's something that's not going to come home to roost here in our community because we are somehow different and we are somehow immune from those trends. But folks, just look at the last couple of weeks in our beloved community where a black man is asked to leave a prominent hotel for the sin of speaking with his mother on the cell phone in a lobby in a hotel for which he had paid to stay. Consider this. In the subcommittee of our Chamber of Commerce, as members of my staff are going into that meeting to talk about and highlight and gain support for a proposal to increase diversity in the workforce in our community, racism is exhibited. And sadly, nobody speaks up and says that it is wrong. Finally, somebody did, but it took too long and the damage was done. And we know what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would say about that. He would say, it is not the words of our enemies that we will remember. It is the silence of our friends. So, I ask you this. Do you feel as I do? Do you feel that we are being tested? I do believe we are being tested. And I personally intend to commit to rise to the challenge. And I know all of you have committed to rise to the challenge too. And the good news is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave us the playbook for how we rise to meet this challenge. And he taught us that it is through service, and through action that we rise to meet the challenge. 
And he further preached urgency. He told us we cannot wait. He told us we cannot waffle. He told us we cannot stand in the middle. We have to pick sides. And he admonished us, stand on the side of justice. And that is the side... That is the side on which we will stand together in Portland, Oregon, and we will not bend to racism no matter what. And Dr. King encouraged us. He said, do it at the local level. Be responsible for what happens here. Take accountability for your own community in your own community. And that is what we are doing. We are gathered here today to begin the hard work together that we must do to rise together to meet the challenge. In conclusion, because I can feel Pastor Hennessy. I feel him. You know, we are brothers. He has told you this, right? I can feel him. <laughs> but Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who stood right here at this podium, he gave his life for justice. And in doing so, he gave us an incredibly valuable gift. He gave us a gift, and it's a gift we dare not squander. Thank you for being here and participating in our beloved community. Thank you.